The next filter I use for selective grading is the mask filter. And the mask filter, rather than using a range of colors, lets me constrain grading to a particular area. So for example, I've got a little shot here of me just doing a pit camera, and I want to do something with my face because the camera possibly not quite in focus, so maybe I could sharpen that up a bit. Now the whole thing is a bit yellow, so obviously I take the primary color corrector and throw that on there, open it up, and then adjust the temperature just to try and improve the color which isn't bad but if i want to do something specifically to my face i'm going to have a bit of a problem because this sort of yellowy bit here is pretty close to the yellow of the wall so it's going to get very hard to just put my color correction on that particular area i mean even with the chrominance filter whack it on there okay let's put in there show key as i drag this out and try and get just me by the time i get my entire face in and most of my hair I'm also getting in some of the wall, which is no good because I don't want to affect everything. I just want to affect my face. So that's where I'm going to use the mask filter. Drop a mask filter on there, open it up, and I want to do something which goes around my face. I'm going to choose the pen and draw a rough shape that goes around my face. Now, the only problem I got is my head wobbles around a lot. If you watch this here, you can see I'm moving my head all over the place, that mask doesn't cover my head all the time. So what I'm going to do is use the motion tracking, which is in the mask here, to try and get it to follow my head. I've got my shape drawn, I'm going to come down here to the timeline, and I'm going to click on this little button to track forward. So it means go from wherever I am and track forward. Now, happen to be in the middle of the shot, probably should have gone to the start of the shot and made the mask, but what the hell. I'll start from here and I'll track it forward. And what that does is it takes that mask and it tries to get it to move around to match my head. Now, because I was in the middle, I'm going to have to go back here and track it backwards. But now you can see I've got a shape there which really does follow my head pretty well. What I'm going to do now is put a filter inside of that. So I'm going to come up to the inside here, click filter, click on this little button to choose the filter, find a three-way color corrector. Click on this little box then to adjust it so I can maybe take down the saturation on my face brighten my face up a bit that's uh, that's definitely better only trouble is i've got a really harsh edge around here now i could try and finesse the shape of the mask just by clicking on it going to this arrow and saying edit shape and then changing the shape of it a bit the only problem with that is to get a shape which follows my head exactly takes quite a bit of time now, a lot of the time when I'm doing just something basic like this, I find the simplest answer is forget about doing an exact mask, get a rough mask, and then turn on softness. So you come down here, click soft, and just whack this up a bit. It's now fuzzing it up from the inside and the outside. So it gets a bit fuzzier in the middle and a bit fuzzier on the edge. But now you notice you can't really see much of a halo around me. And if I play it, Okay, as it's moving, I can probably see a little bit of a halo, so maybe I want to fuzz it up a bit more. But now I've actually got that effect on there, still brightening me up, but you can't really notice the join around the edge. And that's how I'd restrict my color correction to a specific area. Now, just like the chrominance filter, you can use several filters in one. So what I'm going to do is click on this, and I'm going to use that combine filters again. Nice thing that I've got in here, which I don't have in the chrominance filter, is I've got a search box. So if I want to find combined filters, I can just type in a bit of the word confine and it pops it in there. To that, let's try a primary color correct. So what I'm going to do is open this up and let's go down to the graph area and sort of brighten up the midtones. Maybe brighten up the shadows a bit. Just put a bit more blue on it and let's put some saturation back in. Let's then add on a bit of sharpness, just helping to make me look like I was in focus a bit more. Of course, you can go completely over the top, but you'll know that by just playing it a bit. And then if I want to, I could bang on another filter. Let's put on a three-way color corrector and just boost the mid-tone colors as well. I've now taken that particular shot and changed my head only and not the rest of it. Now, I can still see a bit of a halo, so still I'll need to maybe fuzz the edge up a bit more. Also, I think that I have probably got too much of an orange beard. I quite like the saturation I've got in the rest of it, but I'd like to get rid of my beard a bit. So I'm going to actually put in a chrominance filter inside of this and I'm going to choose the orange beard. Yeah, there we are. Fuzz it up a little bit. 
Then let's put a filter inside of that to take down the color on the old beard. You notice there I can actually stick a chrominance filter inside a mask filter. Yeah, I think that's better. And you can have multiple masks as well. If I was to just draw in another area, maybe this one here, it's actually put the same effect on both bits. Now, maybe I want this area here to have a different kind of effect. Now, if you want to do that, I'm going to delete that. Simple answer is bang on another mask filter. And now I can shove in a shape over here, put an effect on the inside of that. And now I've got a different effect in two different areas. No problems at all in shoving on multiple mask filters, multiple chrominance filters. I do that all the time. You'll get to a point where your computer can't cope with it because you're asking it to do lots of effects, but then you just have to render it. But I do layer lots of different effects in here and I'll put one on to do something and then I'll want to do something else and want to do something else and I'll just carry on doing it. If I get to a point where I have to render it, then I'll render it. Now, if I decide here I wish the shadows here were a bit lighter, well, I could stick on primary color corrector and then just go into maybe the RGB curves down here and brighten the shadows up a bit. Or maybe I could have used the chrominance filter and just chosen the dark areas. Loads of different possibilities, but you can see I'm continually throwing on lots of effects. My system is still handling it quite happily. Now, I do happen to have a really nice i9 computer. The latest i9 computer with quick sync on it so it is a very powerful computer but that's why you get a powerful computer so you can just keep adding on things and playing with them without having to render